Welcome to ATC the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we'll be discussing about an elderly male who came to here with complaints of acute onset of generalized tiredness and palpitation since that day morning. Should begin. Sir, so a 74 year old male was brought to here with complaints of generalized tiredness and palpitation since that day early morning. So initially went to another hospital and then he came to a hospital for further management. So on arrival, I was actually brought in a wheelchair and it was received in a trolley. Propped up and on initial 10 second assessment, he was conscious or in turn obeying to my commands. And we went to the primary survey. His survey was patent. There was no signs of any airway obstruction. There was no stride or gurgling or any pooling of secretions. Breathing part, he had a respiratory rate of 20 per minute and saturation was maintaining 95% in room air. His chest was on auscultation was clear with bilateral equal air entry. Circulatory part, his uh, heart rate was 140 per minute and blood pressure record was 130 by 80. And disability part, he had a full score of GCS with pupils equally reactive. And exposure part, he was febrile and GRBS checked was 213 milligram per deciliter. So along with that, we checked one primary adjuncts. Uh, one was ABG. It was not showing any ISMBC arrangement. pH was 7.38 and all other parameters with the normal limits. Uh, except for uh, potassium. Potassium was showing as 5.1. And in our ABG, we have some extra parameters. So potassium was showing as 5.1 and creatinine was... Uh, no, the potassium was 5.1, that's so creatinine was normal. And we took an ECG. Uh, ECG was showing a wide complex tachycardia with a heart rate of uh, rate of 138. Uh, so this was our adjunct. And Can you tell the causes for wide complex tachycardia? Uh, According to ACLS protocol, hmm. you tell what are the reasons for hmm. wide complex rhythm. So basically, if a patient is coming with tachycardia, we usually assess them as uh, with an ECG, we can divide them like a narrow complex and wide complex. Uh, so anything more than uh, three blocks or three boxes, we take it as wide complex. It's more than 120 milliseconds, we take it as wide okay. complex. QRS more than three? Uh, boxes. Three small boxes. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, suppose we are getting an ECG, the chances we are getting the waveforms will either, either be a monomorphic or a, a ventricle tachycardia or it could either be a polymorphic or tachycardia. Okay. So basically, it can be a VF. Hmm. Hmm. or it can be a VF. So, hmm. so basically anything alternating below the level of the AV. So again, wide uh, complex tachycardia will be divided into regular, regular monomorphic regular and, monomorphic and irregular. irregular polymorphic. polymorphic. Okay. So in regular monomorphic tachycardia, what are the causes for uh, this type of... Uh, Monomorphic VT. Monomorphic VT. Mm -hmm. Ventricular no, tachycardia. Irregular, it will be polymorphic. No, no, regular only you tell. Mm -hmm. Wide complex tachycardia. Monomorphic VT is one of the most important causes. Mm -hmm. Other causes? Causes usually will be like uh, structural heart disease, like any previous or any ischemic heart disease. There are two important reasons. One is VT. Mm -hmm. Second one is SVT with aberrancy. Correct, uh -huh. no? Okay. See, SVT with aberrancy will produce wide complex tachycardia. Mm -hmm. VT. Uh, actually, it produces white complex tachycardia. So, that is very important. In white complex tachycardia due to SVT, hmm. what are the causes? Uh, basically, uh, there is a... Uh, With a pre-existing uh, or WPW syndrome or any aberrancy. Okay, like that, okay. WPW SVT syndrome. SVT with aberrancy can cause regular white complex tachycardia. SVT with aberrancy means? Aberrancy meaning uh, pre-existing, let's just say a patient has any conduction pathway defect, like a WPW syndrome. Then, just other than that? Uh, that AVRT. They say retrograde re-entry is there. Re-entrant so. re 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 pathways. So, there are three important reasons. One, SVT with RBVP, mm -hmm. SVT with LBVP, SVT with WPW syndrome. So, for major reasons for wide complex tachycardia is SVT with RPV, SVT with LBV, SVT with WPW syndrome, VT. VT. So these are the four important causes for wide complex regular tachycardia. And that how do you know that it is VT or SVT? There are a lot of things are there but simple ECG you are seeing an ECG. How do you know that it is SVT or VT? There is something called as a Brugada criteria. Okay. Sir. So according to Brugada criteria, Say, there is basically there is concordance will have to see hmm. if it is a VT there will be a uniform concordance either, either, either all it will be in positive or all it will be negative okay so there are six steps we can assess in Brugada's uh, criteria to hmm. rule out whether it is uh, FCV with aberrancy or we can confirm as VT okay so first thing will be concordance either okay. it should be all positive or negative with okay. no RS pattern in between okay and suppose it is AV dissociation uh, second will be AV dissociation okay 
So basically in SVT, there we won't be seeing any P-waves. Okay. It will be complete absence of P-waves, but in okay. AV dissociation, in between the QRS complex, we can see and few P-waves. Okay. So which can indicate AV dissociation. And third will be the RS interval will be more than 100 milliseconds. Okay. And then it's most probably it's VT. And then... <coughs> LBBB or LBBB pattern will not be seen. Okay. Uh, so generally in the RBBB or uh, LBBB pattern you have the uh, right ear. Okay. In the rabbit ear appearance in the usual RBBB the uh, right side will be more predominant. More prominent. But in uh, actual VT the left side will left be side predominant. Will be. So in that most important is mm. if you follow the ECGs mm. Like uh, in SVT, ECG follows different, like uh, some will be positive, some will be negative. Like mm. V1 will be negative, V2 will be negative, mm. V3 will be partially positive, partially negative. That pattern will follow in SVT, whereas in VT all leads will be either positive or negative. Okay. So that is the most easiest thing to make a diagnosis in emergency room. Okay. And if you know the previous ECG, like LBB is there, RBB is there, mm. WPW syndrome is there, that mm. also should be taken into consideration. Mm. Okay. So you think that this is a white complex tachycardia due to VT? More VT. Okay. So once you see VT mm. in ECG, mm. what is the second thing? Stable. Stable. Uh, we have to stable. Uh, concern the stability of the okay. patient. So you have to see whether the patient is stable mm. or unstable. Most of the doctors think that VT means always unstable. Mm. VT can be even stable, mm. stable or unstable. Mm. So as per AHA guidelines, we think about five things that can we can consider the stability of the patient. One is any acute ischemic pain, chest pain, then any altered sensorium. Uh, then the, any signs of shock or any signs of heart failure uh, and also uh, or any pulmonary signs. So basically okay. any of this is coming to be positive, we had to take the patient as unstable okay. and also hypotension. So chest pain, hypotension, altered sensorium, any signs of heart failure or any signs of shock, we had to take the patient as unstable and then the algorithm will go for synchronous cardio version. Okay. Suppose the patient is unstable, go mm. for shock. Mm. If the patient is stable only, you go for, for medical management. So in this patient, actually, even though uh, he had a complaints of palpitation, uh, vital voice was stable. His okay. BP was he was maintaining. He doesn't have any chest discomfort. He doesn't have any features of heart failure. No, he was in shock. So we can take the patient as a uh, stable VT. So we went with medical management. So medical management, the drug of choice is amiodarone. Okay. Amiodarone, uh, we initially gave 150 milligram in D5 okay. water. So again, and if you know the rhythm properly, suppose mm -hmm. you know that, so according to ACLS criteria, it is only amiodarone. Mm -hmm. White complex tachycardia, it is amiodarone. Mm -hmm. But if you know further, if you are a good DCG reader and you understood that it is LBBB with white complex tachycardia, mm -hmm. RBB with SVT, mm -hmm. WPW syndrome with SVT, then you can use any drug. Mm -hmm. But according to ACLS, a white complex tachycardia, only amiodarone is a choice because mm. that is designed for like that, a general doctor mm. who doesn't know all these uh, like rhythms. Mm. Amiodarone is a very good drug. Mm. But suppose you know that it is SVT with LBVP, mm. then you can uh, use your LBVP. other drugs uh, like uh, diltiazem, verapamil, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And why in white complex tachycardia, mm. uh, we don't... Uh, we don't, uh, we don't means uh, mm. general doctors, they don't prefer uh, diltiasm or virapamil. Uh, Why? What is the reason? What is the reason? Uh, because of WPW syndrome. Mm. If unknowingly, if mm. you give diltiasm or virapamil in a particular type of LBB, sorry, yeah. WPW syndrome, what would happen? It is a calcium channel block. Can it prolong QTs? And, uh, mm. Mm. No, see, what is uh, WPW syndrome? It's, it's an accessory uh, pathway. It's an accessory pathway and produced and tachycardia is produced. Mm. If you use beta blocker or diltiasm, what will happen to the regular pathway? That also regular will pathway will be completely blocked. Then only pathway available is the accessory mm. pathway. So the tachycardia is going to increase. Mm. That is one more reason to select Amiodron. Okay. Mm. So unknowingly, if you give a diltiasm or verapamil in a white complex tachycardia, mm. unfortunately, if it is uh, a w S SVT with the WPW syndrome, mm. the problem is going to increase. Mm. That's why in ACLS protocol, mm. whatever may be rhythm, mm. you are going to give only amiodron. Mm. But if you know very well that it, the, this ECG shows an LBB with white complex tachycardia, you can definitely go for mm. diltiasm, verapamil, whatever it is. Mm. Okay. So that mm. doubts many doctors are having mm. because why even in LBB with tachycardia, why we are using amiodron? Mm -hmm. 
that is only for a general population mm. acls is designed for mm. general doctors mm. okay so basically this patient we initially went with amidron amidron 150 mg was given in d5 uh, 100 ml over 10 minutes uh, but even after the first dose actually his uh, tachycardia persisted okay. so his second dose was also given and following that actually uh, we got sinus rhythm mm. and uh, following that we started on infusion 1 mg per minute infusion was started for the next 6 hours uh, but uh, after starting the infusion there were in never any reoccurrences of tachycardia so he was hemodynamically stable and after that but the thing is after what two hours he started developing some tachy and this thing breathing difficulty and some crepitations were also uh, found on auscultation so later he had to be put on niv because he was on an early stage of pulmonary edema so that was one complication that should be observed after two hours of starting the infusion okay. Uh, but other than that uh, he was otherwise uh, stable and about 6 hours later actually his rhythm was uh, reverted to his sinus rhythm and he was actually he is currently undergoing observation in the ccu okay mm. so basically if a patient is coming with tachycardia we take an ecg uh, whether uh, ecg can show either a narrow complex or a wide complex tachycardia a narrow complex can be anything from uh, anything of sv in this thing suprarenal tachycardia it can be an af flat uh, narrow uh, complex how do you divide hmm. how will you divide again regular and irregular again okay. regular and irregular irregular okay. most probably will be like an af atrial fibrillation and uh, our multifocal atrial tachycardia mg okay. and regular, regular will be regular will be uh, mostly uh, could be sinus tachycardia or svt okay so and actually so, svt means hmm. regular narrow complex tachycardia is svt hmm. okay the atrial flutter can also uh, atrial flutter normally heart rate will not be very high hmm. it can be high but mm. not very high like mm. svt 161 40 mm. you have never seen no we in mm. practice we very rarely see mm. okay. okay and and each of this one uh, the, there is a uh, narrow complex or tachy- this thing wide complex we again divide it as stable or unstable mm. according to the criteria and anything unstable we go for uh, the synchronized cardioversion suppose in this patient he was how do you do synchronized cardioversion and mm. what all drugs you select how do you manage the pain mm. suppose this patient was unstable by any chance we would have gone for a synchronized cardioversion so basically in monomorphic vt the recommended dose is uh, 100 joules as a starting dosage and uh, the first thing will be like we inform the uh, patient and the bystanders regarding the current situation and explain the procedure and we take a cons- oral and a written consent so the procedure actually involves uh, sedation and also we give some analgesia and also uh, we give a sh- small dose of uh, shock that is synchronized shock over the uh, precordium so once explaining the procedure there are two types of atrial fibrillators mm. we have uh, we have biphasic biphasic uh, uh, some hospital have monophasic, monophasic. which is a mm. previous generation mm. what is the basic difference uh, we, basically we will have to use a higher dose of uh, joules uh, in, in mono not to get the same effect okay. mm. right case the direction of the current will be in two directions mm. so since it is that it will be shorter duration which is why less energy joules will oh. be required in monophasic the direction is only one in one direction mm-hmm. which is why more energy will be required okay so the initial dose itself will be will be starting with 160 to 200 in case of uh, monophasic and in biphasic we will start with 100 joules so uh, after explaining the procedure uh, we arranged mainly for sedation and also in case of the patient goes bad we arranged for all the uh, crash uh, medicines will be arranged also including intubation and uh, we will be inserting two uh, agents one is a uh, sedating agent and an analgesia so in our department we usually either go for um, midas with fenda combination or atomidate with fenda combination So at home date we usually go for a uh, 0.2 mg per kg so sub uh, sub uh, anesthesia dose that is 0.2 mg per kg to get a minimal sedation along with that uh, we usually give uh, about 1 microgram per kg fenda usually give about about 8 to 10 at home date with about 50 microgram fenda it should be adequate for the a good sedation and along with analgesia so once the patient is completely sedated uh, we uh, we place the, we can either use a pad or a paddles uh, we, we select the joules uh, there in the defibrillator there is a synchronized button uh, after pressing that we can see a uh, dots coming on the r wave uh, so once that thing is ready uh, we select out the required joules you think before applying the pad any other precaution you want to check or uh, do it the area should be dry should it chest should be dry there mm. should be water contact or anything and then if it's a hairy chest it has to be shaved hairy. quickly mm. so that proper complete placement of the pads is available In time, if you used any patches, an atrial fibrillation, so it should be completely okay. Why? Uh, I think it's actually once the current passes, this thing can burn off. Like, ah, burn out and explosive. Okay, mm-hmm. good. 
Sometimes we we give current that is thing can cause lot of bonds and all yes. that. So any medication patches we have to remove, and if it's yeah. totally hair, and not only totally remove, completely wipe it out, clean it, then mm-hmm. apply the pad. Okay, good. So if it's too much of hair, we have to like locally shave the area also with razor mm-hmm. before applying the pads. And also, if you're using pads, we have to use adequate amount of jelly uh, before applying to the body. So the basic idea is, uh, as shown in the diagram, more like basically the pad should, uh, the paddle should, in, in between the paddles, the heart should come. In that way, we keep one in the uh supply and one in the apex region and we give shock so the difference is in case of synchronous cardioversion the shock will not be immediately uh released in the into the body so we, we have, have to, to select the button uh, we synchronize the button uh, okay here the first the synchronize button you have to sel- uh, charge the uh, paddles and then uh. keep and hold for a few seconds uh, until the shock is delivered so once the machine detects the correct r wave the shock will be delivered so basically so we have to do nothing mm. we have to just keep the paddle and Press mm-hmm. the switch. Mm-hmm. Many think that we have to look for the R wave and press it on R wave. Mm-hmm. That's a wrong thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, we just press it. Mm-hmm. The machine will detect R wave and it will deliver mm-hmm. the shock. Only thing we should not take back the mm-hmm. paddle. Only really mistake usually people do is actually they press and they say it's not working and they take it back. That's the only thing is we have to hold it for a few seconds yeah. until the shock is released. We have to make sure that shock is delivered. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what you should uh, do for the like surrounding people? Uh, thing is, we always should uh, make sure everyone is cleared from the body of the patient. Okay. So no one should be even touching the patient. And also, if you're using any oxygen supplementation or anything, at the moment we have to remove that okay. because sometimes it can even co- can cause burns. Okay. Also, some incompatible old monitors, even the connection wires can cause burns. Okay. So it's preferable to like remove all the cables before delivering the shock. Okay. Uh, and the patient is wearing. Mm-hmm. Okay. That and other things we have to remove. Let- and suppose we are not able to revert by the initial dose we can slowly hike up the dose like by 140 160 like that up to the maximum 200 through even if required and suppose the patient is not reverting like by repeated cycles so even after the uh, multiple times if the patient is not reverting then we can uh, concomitantly start a medical uh, treatment along with the uh, cardioversion because studies have shown even ch- after, after starting amidron infusion the chance of uh, synchronous cardioversion is uh, success rate is much more higher so that can also be tried if the patient is having persistent uh, tachycardia so this patient actually can sometimes be converted into hmm? after the dc shock hmm? how it may be converted to so basically the uh, show in synchronous cardioversion the shock is delivered at the point of r wave that is after the uh, ventricular depolarization starts and at the midpoint we are delivering the shock so at any point beyond this area it can cause arrhythmia so if if you are giving the shock in the uh, t wave or even after the t wave it can cause arrhythmia so in the repolarization phase if you are giving the shock there's a high chance uh, the it will stun the heart so mm-hmm. basically it will stop the heart for a few seconds and the when the heart restarts most probably it will go in the sinus rhythm that is the basic idea behind cardioversion or it may be reverted to ventricular fibrillation also ah. So if it is going to be a ventricular fibrillation, what we will do? I suppose like if there is a small chance the uh, patient may go into VF, yeah, then, then we have to immediately uh, turn off the sink and put on the maximum yeah. joules and give a direct shock. Direct shock. Right. Right. Yeah. So there is no point in like waiting or like for a few things. Thing. We can yeah, definitely go for the tracings for mm. some more time mm. and uh, so look, make it mon- clear that there is no chance of going for the VF. Mm. Okay. So it's a uh, persistent VF. Immediately go so for. Don't maximum. forget to switch off this. Switch off the synchronized button. So then the patient will be going into like cardiac arrest and we have to go for the arrest management. Uh, suppose the patient is coming with a uh, uh, this thing, a white complex and we have to differentiate. Uh, some ideas in favor of like a more likelihood VT is actually uh, there is an absence of any typical RBV or ABV morphology in the ECG. And also there is extreme axis deviation which we can find in uh, this thing. Uh, negative QRS complex is in 1 and uh, AVL. Mm. And also there is uh, this thing, uh, very broad complexes, more than 160 milliseconds complexes. And also like positive concordance or negative concordance. And also like features like uh, fusion beats or capture beats. Capture beats means basically in the VT, in between some sinus rhythm might uh, capture between the beats showing a normal uh, sinus rhythm in between. And fusion means basically means there is a fusion of the ventricular plus the sinus rhythm causing a mixed beat. So this all features actually uh, support in favor, more in favor of a uh, VT than an SVT with aberrancy. Mm-hmm. And also if you want to like, as per ACLS guidelines, also if you are like having a doubt whether it's a VT or a SVT with aberrancy, we can trial, give a trial of one dose of adenosine. 6MG mm-hmm. can be given. If it's an SVT, it might revert back to like 
a proper SVT or a sinus rhythm. If it is not reverting, we have to go for VT management, mm. which can be tried. So in our patient, it was more like a stable VT which reverted by adenosine uh, amidonal infusion, and um, that's what. Now the patient is undergoing. Uh, okay. What are the, the reasons for uh, VT? Uh, VT? Why patient develops VT? Uh, VT most for uh, most usually usually have a sequelae of uh, like an old ischemic heart disease or maybe a, like a congenital structural heart disease or a previous MI. You see a lot of VTs in ICU and all. What are the hmm. other reasons? Then ischemic heart disease. Dyslectromia. Uh, Dyslectromia is one of the most important causes. Hmm. Then. Uh, structural then. heart disease, then. recent MI. Okay. Um, hypoxia. Okay. okay. Uh, then the drug induced. Hmm. Drug induced. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, what are the reasons for prolonged QTC? Oh, mm-hmm. Torsadis point is, what is torsadis point is? It is prolonged QTC. This prolonged QTC can lead to torsadis point mm-hmm. is, that, that is prolonged QTC syndrome leading to mm-hmm. uh, torsadis. What is torsadis point, D point? It will be irregular waves with white complex QRS. Basically polymorphic VT. It is not exactly, it is polymorphic VT only, but mm-hmm. how do you describe it? It will be like wound around the... Uh, yeah. Okay, it is twisting around the axis. Mm-hmm. That means some mm-hmm. uh, complexes will be on the upper part of the axis. That means it will be positive. Mm-hmm. Some will be negative. Mm-hmm. So the axis will be twisting. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, how do treatment different uh, uh, magnesium for magnesium sulfate? It's a drug of choice. Magnesium sulfate. Then okay. we give two gram magnesium sulfate over two minutes. That is okay. a drug of choice for dosage. Okay. What is what mm-hmm. is ill-sustained VT and sustained VT? Sustained VT, and ill sustained means basically anything uh, happening between less than 30 seconds, okay. we call non sustained or ill sustained VT. Okay. Anything more than that, a sustained VT. Okay. Single ventricular ectopic, you might have seen. Hmm. Two ectopics coming in a row, what do you call it? By Gemini. Three? Tri Gemini. Three is VT. Three, Three and is more is VT. VT. Hmm. Tri Gemini? By Gemini, Tri Gemini, and more than three is VT. Than, than three okay. Is VT. If it is uh, time, tell you that whether it is. Um, uh, sustained, sustained or, or ill-sustained. Ill sustained. Okay. Mm. okay. Regarding uh, yeah. drug selection, mm. yeah, what are the options you told? Uh, we can either go for amidazolam with fentanyl, fentanyl or ectomidate with fentanyl. Okay. Say so, what are the advantages and disadvantages of the former and the latter combination? Mm. Which is an ideal one? Uh, basically, if the patient is in like a borderline uh, uh, vitals, like Mm-hmm. Patient is having 90-60 BP or something, we prefer to go for ectomidate. Mm-hmm. The thing is actually, it's a highly cardiac stable and also it's very easy to revert the patient back also. Okay. Ectomidate is actually quicker action on, or quicker onset of action and also we can revert the patient back also very fast. Mm-hmm. But midazolam, I will take uh, some time to act and also the duration of action will be more compared okay. to ectomidate. Okay. Okay. And also, uh, patient, it can cause hypotension. So, what is the duration of action of a termidate? A termidate, uh, maximum uh, onset will be like in uh, less than one minute mm. and duration will be around, maximum will be around 45 minutes. 45 minutes? Ah, 20 to 45 Okay, minutes. what does it produce, a termidate? Uh, you say, actually, does it produce a, mm. s- a procedural sedation analgesia or anything else? No, it is, it is not a sedating agent, it is an induction agent. What so is it, an induction agent? Uh, it dissociates the uh, this thing. Uh, it dissociates. A termidate, any induction agent mm. will knock down your consciousness. Mm. That is, you are making a conscious mm. patient to an unconscious level. Mm. That means you had, you are making a patient, the airway compromise may occur, suddenly the patient may vomit, mm. aspirate, anything may happen. Mm. So, this one, midazolam, will produce only sedation. sedation. Mm. You can minimize the dose mm. and tritate the dose to the individual noid and then you can achieve the mm. analgesia part from the fentanyl. fentanyl. So, these are all the things which are the procedures which are being Needing only procedural sedation and analgesia, yes. not an uh, induction agent which will produce unconsciousness. Mm-hmm. Okay. So basically, when you have a patient who is having wide complex tachycardia mm-hmm. in emergency room, what all things you should do? That is the main thing mm-hmm. here in this patient. Mm-hmm. The first thing is actually we have to uh, consider the patient whether he is stable or unstable or treatment okay. plan will be according to that. If the patient is stable, we have some time to like decide on which treatment to like f- go further. It all starts again with ABC. Okay, if patient, everything. If a patient, if at all patient has developed a heart failure or anything, then airway has to be secured first, aspiration has to be uh, prevented and managed accordingly. Then for breathing, uh, adequate oxygenation, ventilation has to be provided. Continuous cardiac monitoring has to be done, then rhythm has to be assessed, and then 
depending upon the rhythm and the patient's vital status, further management goes on accordingly. No, according to ACLS protocol, rhythm assessment is very simple. Mm. You have only uh, here. Mm. You have only narrow complex, mm. wide complex. Tachycardia, bradycardia. Mm. Narrow. Stable, here stable. the your patient is having wide complex, uh, stable. stable, regular, ta- regular tachycardia. Mm. So you have only t- one treatment option: airway, breathing, circulation, and analyze the rhythm. Analyze rhythm according to ACLS. It is like this. Mm. Then you have only one option. What is option? That is amitron. Mm. The patient is having shock, then or shock or any instability. Mm. You go for other side of the chart. Mm. It is cardioversion. Cardio okay. Mm. So that is advantage of easiness of uh, ACLS protocol. Mm. But if you learn further, then you can further divide into uh, mm. uh, uh, SVT with aberrancy, SVT with aberrant pathways, mm. then VT. Mm. So we, some VT itself, you can give different types of drugs. Mm. But for us, it is all amitron. Mm. Okay, where else you can use amitron other than uh, this white complex tachycardia? Yes. In, again, in narrow complex also it can be okay. used. Uh, okay. Basically, okay. amidron is a pan-cardiac... Okay. Uh, uh, Almost as all a, types of uh, tachyarrhythmia, mm. amidron can be used. If you don't know the rhythm, we yeah. can use amidron. There is no much mm. side effect like hypotension cannot occur. Mm. So many advantages are there. Mm. But it's a like pan-sensitive antiarrhythmic drug. Mm. Any adverse effects for uh, amidron? Mm. Mm. So what you have to monitor in the patient? TSA. Thyroid function. Mm. 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 Some patient. Mm. Mm. Thyroid, then liver function, RFT, okay. and also part of the So, in acutely function. in emergency room or ICU, it can, patient can develop uh, hyperthyroidism. Mm. Follow that hypothyroidism. Mm. Normally, they develop hyperthyroidism mm. initially, then they develop hypothyroidism. Mm. Chronic use lead to hypothyroidism. Mm. Then, liver uh, diseases, mm. lung diseases, that all long term problem. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Any other drug? Uh, uh, we can uh, the <coughs> especially in uh, this thing uh, in newer ASA guidelines, the uh, amitron has also been like uh, as an alternative we have they have suggested for lidocaine also. Okay. That's in cardiac arrest. But suppose the patient is in this kind of situation, stable VT, we can again use lidocaine as an alternative drug. Okay. The drug will be like fifty to hundred milligram over two to three minutes as a bonus dose, and once the rhythm is reverted, uh, we can give a start a maintenance dose of one to four milligram per minute as an infusion. Okay. This is an alternative therapy for amidron. Okay. Also, we can go for procainamide. Procainamide that is not available. Not available in India. Is there any separate preparation for intravenous purpose in lidocaine? Lidocaine, yeah. Basically, it's called silocard. Hmm. The normal lidocaine actually has some preservative agents which is not suitable for uh, IV injections. So, suppose we want to use it as an IV for mainly for cardiac arrhythmia and purposes, we have to especially use. Uh, like silocard. Preservative free. Mm. Methyl paraben, isopropyl mm. paraben. Mm. These are the things most commonly causing anaphylaxis mm. or allergic reactions due to the local anesthetic. Mm. Mm. So, the, uh, the preservatives are taken away mm. in the cardiac pressure mm. and the drug formula should end as cardiac. Mm. Xylocard mm. or mm. any other thing will be mm. preceding or... Mm. So, disadvantages is drugs have actually very uh, short half life, less than one year and all that. So, we have to check the expiry before giving these drugs. Oh. So, compared to other Lidoki preparations, they have a shorter half life, I mean, chef life. How is the patient now? The patient is currently hematologically stable. He is off NIV, off uh, this infusions. Reason for VT? Ischemic heart disease. Ischemic heart disease. He had oh. a previous inferior volume about 15 years back oh. and he's on cardiology follow up here. Anything else you want uh-huh. to tell? Or? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.